Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Glasses. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about the intensity rules as well as intensity ratio by solving one numerical problem for the spectra of alkali elements. As you can see here, the spectrum of sodium atom which is having D1 and D2 lines. In my previous two videos, I have given selection rules for the spectra of LS coupling and JJ coupling. So from there you can only understand which line is going to be appear and which line is not appearing in the given spectrum right so I request you to please go and check those videos first before going through this video I will also give the link of those two videos in the description box since here you are having two lines so you can say doublet easily but here you are having six lines and you are saying it triplet actually uh, this triplet and this doublet doesn't related with this number of lines however these are related to the spin multiplicity as you can see here so here we are having triplet to triplet transitions and here we are having doublet to doublet transition so that is why we are calling it a doublet and we are calling it triplet the second point is anomalous why we are calling it anomalous if we are having more number of transitions available in a given compound then they may have different separation between the lines their intensities may be different so on the basis of their intensity and separation between the lines if that are, that is different not following any pattern then that is called anomalous otherwise we are calling it simple triplets or compound triplets here I have written resonance. So what does this resonance means? And this is the principal series. Principal series means P2S transitions occurring. So this is principal series for the sodium atom. So P2S transitions occurring. That is why it is principal series. If the excited electron is in the S state, 4S state, and from there we are having s to p transitions then that is called sharp transition series for the sodium atom what does it resonance means for sodium atom we are having 11 electrons and the electronic configuration is 3s1 and on excitation this will go to 3p series so 3p here you can see this is our 3p and from S it is going to be 3P. If we are having this transition from this to this, from ground state to excited state and on the same hand, we are having these transition from 3P to, so these are called the resonance lines, right, for the sodium atom and these are designated as D1 and D2. So I hope you understand the principle means, resonance means, doublet means and here anomalous means and this triplet. So these are all are the important terms which you must know before going to see this video, right? And here we are having the intensity ratio which is different. So what are the rules for these intensity ratio so one can easily understand. But before that you must understand which line will appear in the spectrum. I am just going to summarize the rules for this observation of the lines in the spectrum. But before moving further, one more thing which I want to discuss. This D1 line observes at this angstroms and this D2 line observes at this angstrom and the difference, the difference between these two lines is exactly equal to the difference between the energy levels of this P1 by 2 and P3 by 2 energy levels. So that is important point for the physics students as well as for chemistry students and here the selection rules which line is going to be appear and which line is not going to be appear here I have shown some crosses you can see here that these lines will not appear in the spectrum and the rules are based on the LS coupling and based on the JJ coupling so LS and JJ coupling for both we are having delta n can be any integer including 0 and delta s is 0 for ls coupling which holds very good agreement with the ls coupling but it doesn't holds good for the jj coupling and these two rules are common for ls and jj coupling if delta l is 0 
then delta j is equal to plus minus 1 in that case delta j is equal to 0 is not going to be followed right so this i have discussed in detail in my previous video so you go and check that to understand and here parity will be changed so what does this means actually delta l must be small l if we are talking about so plus minus 1 this is called conservation of angular momentum so what does that mean so actually quanta is having angular momentum 1 so if any electron or any atom is absorbing the quanta so it must conserve the angular momentum that is why delta l must be changed plus minus 1 and other rules are following in that order so that is why if your l is positive l is s and it changes to p then this is even in this case this is even l value is 0 so this is even and p for p it is 1 so that is odd so this is called change in parity so your l is even or odd on absorbing the quantum right and in case of jj cup these last two will holds very good and in this case delta s is not equal to 0 because from singlet to triplet and triplet to singlet lines can be observed which is called intercombination lines but here in this case intercombination lines doesn't occur for ls coupling right and for one electron system in both the cases we are having delta l is equal to plus minus 1 and delta j is equal to 0 plus minus 1 and delta s is equal to 0 delta n is equal to any number including 0 now we are coming to the intensity ratio in the doublet spectra shows that the certain intensity rules hold these rules are number one the strongest line in any doublet arises from transitions in l and j changes in the same way i'm just going to show you it with example so here is the example i have shown the principal series of a doublet i hope you understand what i have written over here the line 2p 3 by 2 to 2s 1 by 2 where l and j changes by minus 1 so how you are going to check it so here we are having this p and here we are having this s so delta l is going to be changed from final state which is s s is equal to 0 to minus previous state which is 1 or p right so p to s we are going so here s is the final state minus initial state is the p so we are having minus 1 and about your j j you have to calculate the final one final is 1 by 2 minus the initial one which is 3 by 2 and you will get minus 1 in this transition both l and j changes by minus 1 and in case of second transition here in this case we are having delta l is equal to minus 1 but delta j is equal to 0 here this line will be the strongest line as compared to this line here the next rule is the second one is when there is more than one such lines in previous case we have two lines but here we are having three lines and still it is doublet right so when there is more than one such line in the same doublet the line involving the largest j value is the strongest one so here you can understand on the basis of this we can assign that this line this one will be of highest intensity right so here i'm just going to tell you with the example of this figure so here we are having three transitions i have written over here so you can easily calculate your l and j by the final minus initial states so here in the case number one we are having the changes in l and j is by minus 1 but for the second series which is shown by this 2d 3 by 2 to 2p 1 by 2 this series l and j changes by minus 1 again and here the third one you can see here in the figure the third one we are having 3 by 2 to p 3 by 2 and in this case our l is changes by minus 1 and j is changes by 0 
so here in this case we are having two such lines in which our l and j changes by minus one so which one will be the strongest line so the strongest line out of these two out of these two the strongest line will be the one which is having the higher j value so this is the second example i hope you understand this point now the third point if we are having from l to l minus one transition then this will be the stronger if other than that which is occurring from l to l plus one if we are having p to s this is stronger if we are having p to d which is weaker so here this third rule suggested are in this such in such a manner so i hope you understand these points now the rule number four the transitions are the weaker if the changes in the direction of l and j are different the few cases which we have summarized here in previous two slides so the strongest line or most intense line will be the one in which our delta l changed by minus one delta j changed by minus one in same manner the less intense line will be the one in which our delta l is equal to minus one and delta j is equal to zero the weaker line will be the one in which both delta l and delta j will be in the plus direction right so i hope you understand what does this plus means and delta l is equal to plus delta j is equal to zero will be the weakest one and for such cases where both are occurring in different directions what i have written here so that is given over here if delta l is equal to minus one and delta j is equal to plus one delta l is equal to one and delta j is equal to minus one such type of transitions do not occur right so no line will occur for such kind of transitions right so the intensity rule also suggests us whether by the selection rule we are have we are having the probability of having that line but the intensity ratio suggests us that this line will not be such intense so that we can assign it as a signal right so this is the important point which i need to discuss here for in respect of the intensity of the spectral lines now we are going to solve intensity ratio with one example right so the quantitative rule for the relative intensity here you just understand relative intensity the intensity of the one line with respect to the other one quantity rules for the relative intensities were discovered by berger gorgelo and austin these rules apply not only to doublets but all to the multiplets in general and these are stated as the first rule the sum of the intensities of those lines of a multiplet which come from a common line is proportional to the quantum weight of that level so this is the quantum weight 2j plus 1 i'm just going to tell you further in the next slide with example the second point is that the sum of the intensities of those lines of a multiplet which ends on a common level is proportional to the quantum weight of that level so while we are reading such statements without the example in the given textbooks which is given in most of the books only this one so it is little difficult for us to understand and now i am just going to solve it with example so here is the example which is given over here so we are having two lines only so we will start with two lines so here ia over ib this is our ia and this is our ib and the weight is 2j plus 1 what is written over there right so it suggests us the intensity of this which is started from this level is equal to 2j plus 1 so here what is j j is you know 3 by 2 so in this manner we are going to calculate it which is equal to 4 now what about ib so here ib is equal to 2 into j plus 1 so j is for this it is given 1 by 2 and in this manner we are able to calculate the intensities of these two line which is equal 1 is to 2 so for sodium lines we are having the intensity ratio 1 is to 2 in d1 and d2 and that can also be related with this subscripts d2 is 2 times and 1 is okay now the second example if we have more than two lines 
the previous case is the simple one in which we are having two lines just but here we are having the three lines so what is suggest if we are talking about the starting points so the starting point started from this and this right so one is this and two at this level so here we are having this line as line number b so for b line we are having here this b is equal to 2j plus 1 simply so j is for this pi by 2 and the next two lines is started from this level only so how we are going to calculate this is i a as i have written over here i a and i c so this i a and i c will summed up and the quantum weight is again equal to 2j plus 1 getting my point so what is written in the theory that has such type of meaning so here we are on solving this we get 3 is to 2 right ib over ia plus ic we are talking about the level where these lines will end up right so here the line end up at here this one ic and two lines will end up at here b and c end up at this level so here how we are going to solve this so one line end up at this so we i have written here ic and this is again equal to 2j plus 1 so 2j plus 1 is 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 ia and iv end up at this level and both have same quantum weight so this is equal to 2j plus 1 again and now on solving this we are having 2 over 4 and which is equal to 1 is to 2 now on Further solving this, we are getting this C is equal to 5 by 9B and this A is equal to 1 by 9B. And if we calculate the ratio for both, then we are getting such type of ratios. That if suppose both these lines A and B do not resolve very well, then we are having the intensities as 10 is to 5. In the intensity ratio, if these two are not resolved very well, then we are having 2 is to 1 type of doublet here so this is how one can calculate the intensity ratio of the lines observed in the spectra of alkali metals and also to the other metals and this rule is again applied to the nuclear spin calculations but in that case the difference is here we are observing the j only and in that case for nuclear spins we are observing the f the total angular momentum which is equal to j plus i i is the nuclear spin angular momentum and this j is the total angular momentum of the atom so on combining these two this will be applied to f so instead of writing j we are going to calculate 2 f plus 1 in that case so from there we can calculate the nuclear spins for a given system for molecular spectra we are having this molar absorption constants which decide the intensity of the line and it depends basically a is, equal, a is equal to epsilon b c where epsilon is the molar absorptivity coefficient b is the path length c is the concentration a is the absorbance i have already given one video on solving the molar absorptivity coefficients i hope you guys understand the intensity ratios for atomic and molecular spectra and now we are going to calculate the nuclear spins if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel for more such informative videos. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.